All right, practice exam question 16, right? Tell us osmium has a density of 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter. Um, what volume would be occupied in cubic centimeters by a 1.11 kilogram sample, right? They want to know the volume of that. Um, so our density is grams per cubic centimeter, but our mass is in kilograms. So we have to go kilograms to grams, and then we can use the density, right? So 1.11 kilograms. I know for every one kilogram, I'm going to have 1,000 grams. So we've got 1,110 grams sample. Now we're ready to use the density, right? Density is 22.6 grams for every one cubic centimeter. And that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for volume in cubic centimeters. So um, do our dimensional analysis, kilograms cancel, now grams cancel. We're gonna be left with cubic centimeters. That's the unit I'm looking for. So 1,110 divided by 22.6, which was the density. I get 49.1 um, cubic centimeters for that. I would go three significant figures, three significant figures because 11.11 is three. Uh, the density also has three significant figures, but in this case, I would go with the mass of the sample because we measured the mass of the sample. So that's gonna limit um, the significant figures we report. And then yeah, question 19 is on the list. Gilly, so we'll get there. All right, question 17 is up next. Um, does everybody's question say 10.1 grams or is that gonna be a variable? Is that different for everybody? For question 17. It's a variable. All right. So who wants who wants to use their number? First number that ends up in the chat. Oh. All right. Matt says 17.6 grams. Um yeah, and I I forget uh number of fluorine atoms. So yeah, whoever, again, the person that was earlier in the chat asking for practice going to atoms, here's another example. Here's a better example than the carbon one because here we actually have to do one more step, um, right? So to kind of map it out, we can go from grams to moles, um, moles to molecules. Um, so grams to moles, we're going to use the molar mass. Moles to molecules, right? Avogadro's number. And then now we're going to go to molecules to atoms of fluorine. And for that, we're going to use the molecular formula because the molecular formula, there are two fluorines for each one molecule. So that's the last step um, that we'd have to do. First things first, we need the molar mass, right? So I've got carbon at 12.01. I've got two hydrogens, so that's 2.02. .02, and I've got two fluorines, um, so that's 38. Right, add that all together. All right, eight. 52.03 grams per mole. So, okay, Matt's got 7.6 grams of this fluorocarbon, and we know for mm -hmm. every this one point. mole. Was... I'm just going to mute you real quick, Ramel, there. Um, thanks. Um, 52.03 grams, so we want to find moles, right? 17.6 divided by... 52.03, get 0.3383 moles, right? From there, we want to use Avogadro's number. 
because we know for every one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of this. So we multiply by Avogadro's. Twenty three. Right, I get two point zero three six times ten to the twenty three molecules. So that was step one. That was step two. Now that we've got two point zero three six times ten to the twenty three molecules. This is the new step for us, right? Step one we did. Step two was Avogadro. Step three. We're gonna say for every one molecule, right? That equation, that, that formula tells us there are two hydrogens. So the last step, two, or sorry, there's two fluorines, two fluorine atoms. There are two hydrogens as well, but we're not looking for the hydrogen, right? So we multiply by two, uh, molecules cancel, and I'm gonna get like 4.07, uh, times 10 to the 23 fluorine atoms. I would go three significant figures because the mass is three significant figures, right? 17.6 grams is three significant figures. Don't plug this number into your homework and tell me it's wrong or your practice exam and tell me it's wrong. It's a variable. So your initial mass might be a little bit different. The steps would be the same. Mass to moles using the molar mass moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. And then we're gonna use the, the formula that tells us, right? The molecular formula tells us there's two fluorines for each molecule. All right, that was 16 and 17. The much requested question 19 is up next. Um, I won't do the entire box of question 19, but we can do one of those rows. Um, all right, so for question 19, so practice exam, question 19, right? The first one, all right, is three minus, uh, phosphorus three minus. So it wants to know protons, neutrons, electrons, the mass, and net charge. All right, so the mass, we can start with the mass. The mass is that, and I did a bad job of writing it. It should be up there, should be like that. So our mass number that is in the upper left-hand corner, right? So our mass would be 31. Um, we also know our net charge, right? Our net charge would be minus three. And um, our neutrons and protons, to answer that, we have to go to the periodic table and look up phosphorus. So on the periodic table, phosphorus is atomic number 15, which means I'm going to have 15 protons. When I'm neutral, I would also have 15 electrons, but we're not neutral. We're three minus, which means we've gained three extra electrons. So I should have 18 electrons. And then to find my number of neutrons, well, my mass is 31. 15 of that came from the protons. So I must have 16 neutrons. Um, for the first row there, the first column in um, question 19. For the formatting, uh, just let me just finish this question. For the formatting for like blank six and blank nine, um, you just need to write it in line. So you don't need superscript or subscript. Um, so for six, the answer for blank six, Right, we would just write it in line as 79 selenium two minus, right? So you don't have to do superscript or anything. So if, if it's a formatting issue, maybe that's it. It's just, you can just write it directly in line. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about superscript or subscript for question 19. Oh, maybe it's three minus. Yeah, sorry. So the minus is on the other side, apparently. Um, and then there's a few questions about, and yeah, we'll get to the, do we have to write the Roman numeral? Yeah, so Giselle and um, another student, you need, if it's a transition metal, you need to include the Roman numeral in the naming, right? Um, that was question 19, question 21. All right, here we go. So Oakley, this will help you. We'll do some nomenclature questions, right? So question, practice exam question 21. I've got CU3PO4. I've got PTBR2. And I've got CRNO35. So all of these are transition metal ionic compounds, right? Copper is in the middle of the periodic table. Platinum, chromium, they're all transition metals, right? They're all in that transition block of elements. So to figure this out, right? Um, well, phosphate, phosphate is PO4 three minus. And so that's got a charge of minus three. So if I have three coppers, right? The total charge from copper must be three plus three coppers each. That would make copper plus one. So I would need to say copper one, Roman numeral one, right? Phosphate, right? So it's metal charge of that metal followed by my non-metal, or in this case, my polyatomic, right? So we know copper is plus one because I have three of those balancing out a phosphate, which is PO4, three minus. Yes, Matilda, yeah, you need the Roman numeral. You need the parentheses around the Roman numeral. Um, so this makes this next one is platinum. Right, we know bromide. Bromide is a halogen, so we should know that all halogens are minus one. So I've got two bromides at minus one. That's a charge of minus two. So platinum must be two plus to balance that out. Um, right, so I would say platinum, one, two, bromide. Right, we're going to need to figure the charge out. We can't memorize the charge of the transition metals, especially if your exam's tomorrow, right? That's not something we can do right now. Um, but you can figure the charge out by working backwards. So in this platinum two bromide case, right, we should know that all halogens are minus one. So bromine is a halogen. It's got a minus one charge as an ion. So two bromines at minus one, right? Total charge of minus two. That means platinum needs to be two plus to balance that out. So that's how we, we figured the charge out or we know the charge. Got another polyatomic up next. I've got uh, chromium and I've got five nitrates, right? So nitrate NO3 minus one. It's another polyatomic. So five times minus one. I've got a charge of minus five from the nitrate. That means chromium needs to be five plus. So we would say chromium five nitrate, right? Metal, the charge of that metal followed by the non, the non-metal or the polyatomic um, in this case. Can we go from an example from name to formula? All right. So name to formula, right? If you do um, iron three uh, 
No, I gave that one away. All right, iron two sulfide. So to break this apart, iron two sulfide, well, no, I had that right the first time. All right, iron three sulfide. <laughs> third times third time's a charm. So iron, we know this is the charge of iron. Iron is three plus. Um, we know sulfur, right? Oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, everything in group six is, is minus two. So sulfur is minus two. We need this to balance out. So in order, a quick way to balance this out, Right. If I just say, OK, Fe three plus sulfide, right, that number goes down here. This number goes down there. OK, I've got iron to S3, right, to check that out. OK, two irons at three plus, that's plus six. Three sulfides at minus two, that's minus six, right? That's a sum of zero. Um, so that gives us the equation of Fe to S3. Um, so Ken, I would check your spacing. I mean, it should be, yeah. I, I didn't want to call you out on your spelling, but um, you know, thank you, Sophie. It it should work. Right. The spacing, I would just check that or check um, that you spelled everything correctly. And that you're using, okay, here's another one that's come up. You need to be using capital I. Some people are using a lowercase l and then getting all mad at me, they're getting questions wrong. You need to be using a capital I for the Roman numerals, not the letter L, lowercase l. And then Hussam, no, you're not gonna get a sheet for the transition metal charges, right? We're gonna figure those out by working backwards. Um, all right, back on track. Let's see, that was question 21. We've got two questions left. We can do this here. 